So these super PACs are playing a much greater role in the presidential race, particularly because most of them are only funded by two or three individuals. And they are providing the campaign advertising that the candidates can't afford. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the rise of super PACs in American politics. There's a new and influential player in American politics, the super PAC. With changes to campaign finance laws mandated by the U.S. Supreme Court, these political action committees can donate unlimited amounts of money to independent groups advocating for candidates. Super PACs are game changers, notes non-resident senior fellow Anthony Corrado as he takes a closer look. Tony, there are two U.S. Supreme Court decisions on campaign finance laws that really pave the way for super PACs, Citizens United and FreeSpeechNow.org. Give me the backstory on it, if you would. The Supreme Court in the court case of Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission ruled that a corporation and implicitly a labor union could use their funds to make independent expenditures in campaigns. What the court essentially said was that for the purposes of political spending, uh, a corporation should have the same rights as an individual person. And if a corporation is spending money independently without coordinating with a candidate, they should be allowed to do so. That was their right under the First Amendment. That basically freed corporations and labor unions to begin spending their own money in federal elections, something that had been prohibited since World War II. Then that combined with a second decision, Speech Now, which was a court case that asked if a group is only making independent expenditures and not coordinating with a candidate, not making contributions to a candidate, does that group have to be subject to any contribution limits? Uh, prior to this, the law required that an individual making a contribution to a political committee was limited to $5,000 per year. In speech now, the court struck down that contribution limit and said, so long as you're acting independently, no contribution limits apply. And then another thing that's worrisome for some people is the secrecy factor. We don't always know who's giving how much to whom because of the way these things are set up. One of the things that we're finding is that, you know, with these large super PACs, they have to report their donors and their contributions. But there are many ways that a donor can make a contribution without their name being revealed. First, they could give to a group that then makes the contribution to a super PAC so that the donation is reported as coming from the group and we never know the original donor. We've seen in some cases individuals veil their contributions where they make a contribution to a corporation or a limited liability company or a partnership and then that partnership makes the contribution so we don't know the original source of the money. And in addition we now have regulations that allow groups that are nonprofit organizations, policy advocacy groups, to accept contributions without having to disclose their donors. And finally some of the groups that make advertising expenditures because of strange interpretations of federal election law, have been allowed to report how much they spend on advertising without reporting the source of the money used to pay for that advertising. So there are a number of ways that secret money or undisclosed donors are starting to put funds into U.S. elections. And what about the voter, Tony? It seems to me that his wishes and his voice can be lost in this process, that money can trump the voice of the people at some point. One aspect of the rise of these super PACs is that it has allowed wealthy donors who are willing to write large checks to essentially have a disproportionate influence on the election process because regardless of what the voters decide, if a wealthy donor wants to keep their candidate in the race, all they need to do is write a large check to pay for the advertising and the candidate's able to continue. Well, since the 2008 campaign, President Obama has reversed himself on super PACs. Uh, first he said he wouldn't take the money, now he's going to take it. Why did he do this and what does this say? He's been very successful raising money. He's already raised in his campaign uh, more than $140 million. Uh, he's been raising money for the party. 
and the thought was that between the party and the Obama campaign fundraising, uh, the president would have a large financial advantage in this election. And I think what's happened is that they've changed their thinking and their practical calculus and now believe that given the role of these super PACs and given the ability of a handful of individuals to basically put tens of millions of dollars into a campaign against him, uh, that they need to fight fire with fire and that they need to have the support of a super PAC if they're going to keep their edge. So in some ways what we've seen is uh, principle give way to practice. The power of the super PAC is certainly being felt in the presidential campaign, but you say that the real impact will be seen in the Senate and House races. Tell me why. Where the super PACs are likely to have the greatest effect in the general election, therefore, is in many of the key Republican, Democratic, Senate, and House contests. There's a battle for majority control of Congress this year, and that's where much of the super PAC money will flow. I expect that we will see perhaps 10 or 12 Senate races and maybe 20 House races where millions of dollars are spent by these outside groups to try to influence the outcome of the congressional election. And that's where this unlimited money is likely to have the biggest effect. Because it's one thing to make a $2 million contribution in the instance of a presidential race where a candidate is raising tens of millions of dollars. It's a completely different animal to have an individual be willing to write a $2 million check in a House race where the candidate himself might only spend a million dollars. And therefore, they'll have a much greater role in the congressional elections in the fall than many people expect. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.